Hi everyone! Welcome back to another Planetarium live stream. My name is Jessica. I am the director of Planetarium, and we are still here this week uh, celebrating our um, virtual dark sky caravan, which is uh, highlighting and celebrating the dark skies that we have here in northern Minnesota. Um, and so with me tonight are two should be familiar faces if you've been here before. Um, I will let them introduce themselves, starting with Lindsay, since she's to my left. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm a physics graduate student here at UMD. And I'm Eli. I'm a physics undergraduate student here at UMD. So tonight, um, after several shows this week that have been talking about um, why we have dark skies and why we want to preserve them, some things that we can see, a good kind of beginner's telescope. We're now going to jump into um, the fascinating subject of astrophotography, actually taking pictures of these beautiful night skies. Uh, and Lindsay is going to be telling us how we can get started with that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over to Lindsay. If you do have any questions throughout, leave them down in the comments. Eli and I will be watching those and um, we'll get them asked to Lindsay or you know maybe one of us can answer it as well um, throughout. So Lindsay, take it away. All right, so starting off this uh, beautiful picture of a nebula behind me, actually this was not taken by me, it was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. But in the presentation, all of the pictures I'm about to show you were taken by myself or other staff members at the planetarium. So even though you don't have the Hubble available to you, um, you still can get some really great uh, pictures of uh, the stars. All right, so two of the vocabulary words that you'll see associated with um, astrophotography um, is astrophotography and then night sky photography. So astrophotography usually uh, specifically um, is the term for taking a picture uh, through a telescope with a camera. And then night sky photography is used um, as the vocabulary term to take a picture of the night sky using just a camera and a tripod. Uh, this picture is one that I took uh, when I was at Bryce Canyon National Park. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of show you the process that I did for this picture. It really is a lot easier than you think it might be. So first, at the very basic, you need a camera that has an option to change the time exposure. So these stars are tiny, right? And so you need to be able to have your camera on for a longer amount of time, um, like maybe up to 25 or 30 seconds, um, in order to be able to see the stars um, in your picture. If you just take a snapshot, uh, the lens is not gonna collect enough light for you to be able to see the stars in your picture. So you need a camera that has an option to change the time exposure. Um, one option is a DSLR. So this picture over here of the Canon, um, this is like what I have, but you don't need a camera this fancy. Um, this was like a few hundred dollars. You don't, you don't need that. You just need a camera um, that has the option where you can change the time exposure. You might actually have one of those cameras at your house already. Okay, and then you need a tripod mount. Um, again, when I was first starting out, all I had was this Canon uh, camera and then like a $15 tripod. That, that's all you need. You don't need anything too fancy. Uh, when you're going out uh, to, you know, look online for, you know, tips and things of taking night sky photography, a lot of times they like to try to tell you that you need like super fancy camera lenses, you need a super fancy tripod, you need to use Photoshop. Um, but the, I've only ever used the lenses that came with my camera. Those are called the kit lenses. Um, and I have, I mean, all of these pictures were taken with those lenses. I have not gotten any fancier lenses than that. Um, and then these first several photos, um, including this one was taken with my $15 tripod mount, <laughs> um, that I used to have. And again, this was um, 
not edited in Photoshop or anything. This is just what came out of my camera. Okay, so first, and this is going to depend on what type of camera you have. So in the case of my camera, in order to set um, a long time exposure, I need to set the camera to manual. Um, and then I also need to set the lens to manual focus. Again, depending on the camera that you have, this switching from um, autofocus to manual focus, AF to MF, um, it might be on the lens or it might be on the actual camera itself. So these stars are too tiny for autofocus to work. Autofocus is not gonna be able to see these stars. And so you're gonna have to manually focus your camera. Okay, so when you get the manual uh, setting done, um, this is what I see in my menu. Again, it might look a little bit different um, than uh, what you have on your camera. And it looks scary, it does. <laughs> but all you really need to do just nice, easy beginner astrophotography, we only need to do stuff with the shutter speed the time exposure. That's all you need to change. And you can ignore all of the rest of these settings. Um, you don't need to know what any of these other ones are yet. You just need to know how to change the time exposure. Okay, so we set our long time exposure, um, probably for like 10-ish seconds. Great, we see some stars, awesome, but they are not focused. So we are going to make adjustments to the focus on our lens um, and kind of like twist it back and forth to focus it and take another picture, see if the stars are focused. They're not quite focused yet. So we're gonna focus it again and take another picture. Okay, so these are nice, tiny little uh, points of light for our stars. They're nice and focused, um, but we can't see our Milky Way very well. So here's the Milky Way. So in order, for our camera to pick up more light so we can see the Milky Way even better, we're gonna change our time exposure from 10 seconds to like 25 seconds. There we go, there's the Milky Way. So all I did was just select this menu item right here, just the shutter speed, change it to 25 seconds, and I get this beautiful Milky Way shot. Okay, so all I needed here was a tripod, my $15 tripod, and then my camera that I could change the time exposure to 25 seconds. That's it. Um, focusing can be a little bit complicated, but once you get the hang of it, um, uh, it's nice and easy. So here also, again, no photo editing software. I have not used Photoshop. I have not used Lightroom. I have not used anything just 25 seconds on my camera and uh, my camera on a tripod mount. Okay, and Aurora is just this easy also. Um, so these are two Aurora pictures that I actually took um, uh, probably like 10 years ago now um, over down in Brighton Beach um, along the lake. Um, so this is kind of facing north. Um, a lot of this type of photography um, is kind of um, like taking a picture and seeing if you like it and then maybe changing the time exposure to be longer or shorter, depending on what you want. So in this left side picture, it has a longer exposure than this picture on the right side. So you can see more purple and more aurora, but in the lower exposure one, you can see more definition in the aurora col light columns. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you want to see in the Aurora images. If you want more definition um, or if you just want a brighter Aurora in your picture. Again, these photos were not put into Photoshop or any photo editing software at all. Just a um, time exposure. I believe this one on the right is about eight seconds. So you really don't need very much time to get the Aurora to show up in your pictures. And then this one on the left is about 15 seconds. Okay, if you wanna go a little bit more advanced um, and you have a camera that is able to have the time exposure changed and also the ISO changed, which I'll 
explain on the next slide, um, then you can do that instead of time exposure. So again, I have my Canon camera, nothing fancier than that. My $15 tripod, again, you don't need any photo editing software yet. So um, again, here is the like settings for your manual uh, settings on your camera. So far we have used the shutter speed. Now we're gonna go over here to where it says ISO and we're gonna select that, oops. Um, and so ISO um, is kind of a number system and it determines how much light the sensor, the camera sensor is gonna take in. So with an ISO of 800, you can see this is like the darkest. There's not a whole lot of light that is being collected by the camera um, sensor. And then as we get higher and higher ISO, it collects more and more light. Um, and so you can uh, get a, more and more stars in your picture. So one thing to notice too is, you know, so. Previously, you know, we had our um, dimmer Milky Way picture at the lower time setting, and then at a higher time setting, we had more stars in a brighter Milky Way. So this is like doing a longer time exposure, but without actually changing any time. So all of these pictures, probably like 25 seconds, um, but by, just by changing the ISO and not the time exposure this time, changing the ISO and the light sensitivity, you'll get more stars. So my camera goes up to about 12,800. Again, you know, people are gonna try to tell you that you need a camera whose ISO goes all the way up to 32,000. You don't need that. <laughs> um, I've, again, mine goes up to about 12,800 and that has been doing just fine for me. So another thing that you can do to kind of step it up a little bit um, is light your foreground. Um, so this is a picture in Bryce Canyon National Park and the moon happened to be at about quarter moon this particular night. And so the rocks in the foreground are getting lit up by the moon. Um, and then we still get the nice lovely stars here. Um, Sometimes when you see pictures like this with the foreground lit up in the front, it actually has been photoshopped. Um, they'll go out and take a picture of this rock formation during the day, and then they'll photoshop it with, um, you know, a starry sky um, the, with a picture that they take later that night of the starry sky, but you don't need to do that. You don't need Photoshop for this. If you go out when the moon is up, the moon will light up the foreground for you, and then you don't need to use Photoshop at all. Again, this was taken with my $15 tripod, my Canon <laughs> camera um, with the basic lenses, and this is probably like a 25 second exposure. Again, not used in Photoshop or anything. Um, another way you can light the foreground is with a flashlight. <laughs> so for this picture, uh, this was about 25 second exposure. I shined a flashlight on these road signs over here. This was also in Bryce Canyon. We had a lot of uh, Utah Prairie dogs there. Um, and so that's another way that you can light up um, the foreground is with a flashlight. Okay, so now kind of the most advanced option is actually photo editing and using Photoshop um, or Lightroom. So with this picture, uh, again, this was when I was in Bryce Canyon. Um, actually, by this time I had a better tripod. Um, it was like $100, but I mean, you have, can see that you don't really need a super expensive tripod to get good pictures. Again, these were all with my $15 tripod. Um, so um, this picture is about 25 seconds long. This is on a night where the moon is not out um, so that I, the sky is super dark, um, but my foreground isn't lit up. But that's okay, I just have a nice silhouette of the rocks here. Um, you can see the Milky Way right here. You can even see the Andromeda galaxy right here. And then you can see this green, uh, that's not Aurora, that's called air glow. Um, it's something that you can see, um, it's an atmospheric effect that you can see in really, really dark skies. 
So astrophotography now, I'm taking pictures of um, astronomical objects through the telescope. So one of the easiest ways to do this is actually with your phone and um, a cell phone mount. Um, so this is the cell phone mount that we got for the planetarium. Um, and whatever telescope you have, um, you can just attach it to the eyepiece and then mount your phone on it. Um, and yeah, you just take pictures on your phone like you normally would. And you're seeing whatever uh, the telescope is pointed at. So Jessica took these pictures with that particular setup. Um, we have Saturn here, um, Jupiter, and Jup if you look closely, some of Jupiter's moons. And then over here, we have a, clo a closer shot of Jupiter so we can see the stripes. So this was taken with the, uh, the cell phone mount on the telescope with the cell phone. Um, you don't need the longer exposure like you did with the other method. Um, and again, these have not been through any photo editing. Okay, a little bit fancier option um, is to take your DSLR camera uh, that we use for our night sky photography, get a special um, uh, adapter that will attach the camera to your telescope. So you'll have, you have to get a special adapter that fits specifically your camera and specifically your telescope. So make sure you watch out for that. Um, and then you just set it up to, you focus using the telescope focus knob, and then you set it up for however long of an exposure that you want. Um, I took this one with my DSLR through a telescope um, and it's the moon. And again, I did not have to use any photo editing software for this, just a telescope, my camera, um, and the camera telescope mount adapter thing. All right, any comments or questions so far? Uh, nope, nothing coming through. I need to unmute myself on the stream. Um, <laughs> um, I will also say that cell phone cameras are getting really fancy. And a lot of them have those same options to change the ISO and the shutter speed. Yep. Um, so you could go even simpler by just getting a tripod that you could put your cell phone on and take some of these uh, night sky pictures that Lindsay was showing. Fancy, but are not really that easy. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I know mine. mine's an older cell phone and I can still change that stuff. Um, that's actually the the sh picture of Jupiter with the stripes um, was actually me changing the ISO on my camera. Did you have to get a special app for that or is it just part of? It's part of my camera. Yeah. I My camera has the option to change it to manual mode and then you can change all of those things. So. Um, so we actually did just get a question um, from Aaron Helgeson. What size telescope were those uh, taken with, the ones that were in the astrophotography section of? Yeah. So mine with the moon, um, that was with my um, my eight-inch telescope. Jessica, how about yours? Same with the, the planet ones. Yep, I think same telescope, because that was your Mead, right? Yes. Yeah, so it was the same telescope, or same type, not the actual same telescope. But. Whatever telescope you have, you know, you don't need a big eight inch one. Um, as long as you can see, you know, stuff through your telescope, you can take pictures of stuff through your telescope. Yeah, basically if you're doing it with like the cell phone, um, whatever you see through an eyepiece is what you're gonna see. Um, and if you're curious, we did do a show on Tuesday um, talking about kind of intro to telescopes and gave some recommendations for um, kind of good starter telescopes. Um, so you can always go and watch that from Tuesday and get some ideas from there. 
Um, so I guess one thing that uh, I don't think you specified, but why do you need a tripod? Ah, yes. So um, the earth is moving. <laughs> And it doesn't seem like it's moving that much, but you're looking at a really tiny part of the sky. Um, if you have your uh, camera set to more than 30 seconds, uh, the Earth is going to be rotating and your stars are going to start to trail through your photo. Some people, that's something that I didn't talk about because I didn't want to get too advanced um, in this talk, but that's something that actually you might want in our picture is star trails. They look kind of cool sometimes, but if you don't want star trails in your picture, then you want to keep it to about 25 to 30 seconds of exposure time. And I would also say part of it's because otherwise you have to hold your camera perfectly still for 25 seconds. And I don't know anyone who can actually do that. Uh, so your tripod just lets it stay stable while you're taking those exposures. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but it's honestly fairly simple. You really don't have to get all complicated with it. Yeah, I mean, again, I said this a lot, but you know, you go and learn online about taking night sky pictures and they're gonna tell you to get like a $300 tripod and like, you know, really, really good camera lenses that are a few hundred dollars a piece. You don't need any of that. Most of those pictures were with my $15 tripod. Which is exciting for, you know, me who has been wanting to try this more with just been afraid of the cost. Yeah. I love, I mean, I love doing this because like I see the beautiful night sky and I just want to take pictures of it for people. Absolutely. All right, I was just checking if we got, I'm not seeing. Um, if you do have any other questions, um, now is the time to leave them down in the uh, comments. Um, and I guess, sorry, I was reading my screen. Um, <laughs> we'll say um, we have one more show this week for our virtual dark sky caravan tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be taking you on a tour of some of the other things that we can see in our nighttime sky other than the moon and the planets. Um, and these are great objects for when we have dark skies and you kind of get you know, more accustomed to using a telescope or uh, your astrophotography setup if you are so inclined. Um, and these are some other really great objects to try and look at as well. Um, Eli, how is, it still looks cloudy outside to me. Yeah, really cloudy. Um, so I'm not sure if our telescope stream is going to happen tonight, but I will say tomorrow looks beautiful. We should be good to go with uh, our telescope live stream for our last night of our Dark Sky Caravan. Um, and then next week we will be resuming our normal schedule of uh, streams on Wednesday and Saturday at 7. And since it is going to be the first week of September, which I just can't believe um but just yeah uh we'll be doing our usual beginning of the month shows um what's up uh september and then the constellation show for september um and so that will be wednesday and saturday of next week and um we've got some other special stuff that's in the works um, we're still working out details, so I'm not going to give away too much information, but um, we've got some fun things that we're trying to work out um, that will hopefully get started in September as well. And uh, we'll be posting information on that once we have details sorted. Um, but not seeing any more questions coming in. Lindsay, is there any last things you'd like to add? No? It's All easier right. than it is. Yep. It really is. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll call it there. Um, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, Wait, quick, of quick, sorry. Don't mean, to, don't mean to hold things up. Um, we got another question. Ah. Uh, Michael Sangster, uh, do you use a tracking mount with the phone and telescope? So um, 
So a tracking mount um, is something that you can get. Um, it, so it tracks the stars so that you can do uh, an exposure longer than 25 or 30 seconds because it accounts for the rotation of the Earth. Um, so uh, in all of the pictures that I showed you, I didn't use any of those. So all of those are less than 30 second pictures. Um, and yeah, so you can get a tracking mount for your camera um, that goes on your tripod. Um, but yeah, I didn't include that. Yeah, but and same with telescopes. Telescopes can come either with or without. Yeah. Um, we tend to not recommend the computerized moving telescope mounts for beginners, just because of the, the learning curve and how to set it up properly. Um, but there's definitely that option. But as Lindsay had said, as long as you keep the exposure, what, less than 30 seconds, then it's mm -hmm. not something you need to worry about, unless you're wanting to see star trails, which I personally think are some really cool pictures. So, yeah. I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like if you're, Unless you're taking pictures of the stars alone, if you're using a, a tracking mount, you're most likely going to be using a camera because you'll be taking a picture of like a deeper sky object, um, something you need like a longer exposure for. So it wouldn't even like really be applicable with a phone. I feel like I might be totally wrong, but I feel like you, you can have you can do some exposure. deep sky with a phone. I've gotten um, a pretty good shot of the Orion Nebula with my cell phone really? before. Mm -hmm. Um. So it, it can be done. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, we actually got one more comment from Lane Smith. When can we see the sky? So um, yeah, the weather has not been cooperating with us a lot this week. Um, if you didn't see the telescope stream we did Monday, you can always go check that out. But tomorrow night looks like it's going to be clear and beautiful. And so we will have the telescope stream up tomorrow night um, mm -hmm. looking at a lot of the same things, um, Moon, Jupiter, Saturn, try and catch Mars in there at the end, if possible, especially after Bob gave us such a great um, show about Mars yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, yep, just, it's one of the things, astronomers wish they could control the weather. We can't. It's something you just kind of have to live with. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. Astronomers have to be very patient especially when you live in Duluth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we did have beautiful night Monday, if not a little bit, there, I think there was a little bit of haze from the smoke from California, um, but that seems to be dissipating. And tomorrow night looks like it's gonna be beautiful. I'm very excited. I may stay after the stream and try and take some other pictures. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, so again, thank you, Lindsay. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We hope to see you uh, tomorrow night as well at either our 7 p.m. show or the 8.30 telescope stream. And of course, uh, over the next weeks as we continue with our regular schedule. Um, so we hope you have a wonderful rest of your night, a wonderful weekend, and we will see you again next time. So bye, everyone.